In this module, I will review the muscle control formula and provide an example using an eccentric MTC action. To begin, let's review the muscle control formula. Step one is to identify the joint movement or position. Step two is to identify the effect of the external force on the joint movement or position. Step three is to identify the type of MTC action, be it concentric, eccentric, or isometric. Step four is to identify the plane of movement and the axis of rotation. Step five is to identify on which side of the joint axis the MTCs are lengthening and on which side the MTCs are shortening. And finally, we put it all together in step six to identify which MTCs must be producing or controlling the movement or position. Step one is to identify the joint movement or position. In this case here, you see that we have an example of glenohumeral adduction. So from here, we are going from A to B slowly. So now you see here, we are lowering the arm down towards the body. In terms of identifying the joint motion, we know that we have glenohumeral adduction. And the movement from our perspective is going in a counterclockwise direction. Step two is to identify the effect of the external force on the joint movement or position. Ask ourselves the question, what movement would the external force produce if there were no active muscles? As we go from A to B, we see that the effect of gravity would be to lower the arm towards the body. In other words, the effect of the external force would be glenohumeral adduction. From our perspective, this would be a counterclockwise rotation of the humerus. Step three is to identify the type of MTC action be it concentric, eccentric, or isometric. We will use a flow diagram in order to aid us in making a decision. First, we identify the joint motion and the effect of the external force. Then we have to determine the movement direction. And by this, I mean we have to determine the joint motion in relation to the direction of the external force. So first, we can say whether or not the joint motion and the effect of the external force would be in opposite directions or in the same direction. If the joint motion and the effect of the external force are in opposite directions, then we will have a concentric MTC action. If the joint motion and the effect of the external force are in the same direction, then we have to determine the movement speed. Again, we have to determine the movement speed in relation to the external force. So again, we have to ask ourselves a question. Is that joint motion faster or slower than if there was just an external force? If that joint motion is faster than there was with just an external force, then we have a concentric MTC action. If that joint motion is slower than the effect of the external force, then we say that we have an eccentric MTC action. We can also certainly have a case where there is no movement of the joint whatsoever, in which case we would have an isometric MTC action. And finally, we can have the movement be across the external resistance. In other words, the joint motion and the external force are in different planes. In such a case, we will also have a concentric MTC action. Now that we understand this, let's get back to our example. In this case, we go from A to B slowly. We'll note that the joint motion is going to be glenohumeral A deduction, or going in a clockwise direction. We'll also note the effect of the external force, or gravity, is also to A deduct the glenohumeral joint. But in this case, 
the movement from A to B is slower than if only gravity is acting alone. So in terms of identifying the MTC action, we'll note that the joint motion and the effect of the external force, or gravity, are in the same direction, but the joint motion is occurring slower than if gravity were acting alone, we conclude that we have an eccentric MTC action. Step four is to identify the plane of movement and the axis of rotation. As we go from A to B slow, we note that we have glenohumeral A deduction. Our axis is going to be an anterior-posterior axis that goes through the humeral head. And we note that glenohumeral ab and adduction occur in the frontal plane. Step five is to identify on which side of the joint axis the MTCs are lengthening and on which side the MTCs are shortening. So as we go from A to B slow, we will always have MTCs on one side lengthening and MTCs on one side shortening. For this example, it's just easier to illustrate the MTCs that are on the medial side. So we can see the length of the MTCs on the medial side in picture A and compare that to picture B. We'll note that these MTCs are shortening. The MTCs on the medial side, or the AD ductors, are shortening, which means that the MTCs that are lengthening are going to be on the lateral side, or the AB ductors. And again, it's just kind of hard to illustrate with this example. So step six, we're going to put it all together, and we're going to identify which MTCs must be producing or controlling the movement or position. As we go from A to B slow, we identify the MTC action was eccentric. And we know with eccentric MTC actions, the MTCs that are lengthening are going to be controlling the movement. And the MTCs that are lengthening in this case are going to be those on the lateral side of the joint or the glenohumeral AB ductors, which are not shown. So let's review what we did in this example. In step one, we identified the joint movement or position. We determined that the joint motion was glenohumeral adduction. Step two was to identify the effect of the external force on the joint movement or position. We determined the effect of the external force, in this case gravity, was also to adduct the glenohumeral joint. Step three was to identify the type of MTC action, concentric, eccentric, or isometric. Since the effect of the external force and the joint movement were in the same direction, but we were moving slowly, we determined that we had an eccentric MTC action. Step four was to identify the plane of movement and the axis of rotation. We know that for glenohumeral ab and adduction, the plane of movement is going to be in the frontal plane, and the axis of rotation is an anterior-posterior axis that goes through the humeral head. Step five is to identify on which side of the joint axis the MTCs are lengthening, and on which side the MTCs are shortening. We determine that the MTCs were lengthening on the lateral side, or the glenohumeral AB ductors, and they were shortening on the medial side, or the glenohumeral AD ductors. In step six, we put it all together to identify which MTCs must be producing or controlling the movement or position. Since we identified that the MTC action was eccentric, and we know with eccentric MTC actions, it's the MTCs that are lengthening or controlling the movement, we determined that it was the glenohumeral abductors that were controlling the glenohumeral adduction eccentrically.